Welcome to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain, and our weekly sessions in English, thanks to American Friends of the Prada Museum, and we're here live on the museum's social media programming. As a nonprofit, American Friends of the Museum, our mission is to support it in everything we do. We encourage you to find out about us and our sister organization, the Fundación Amigos del Museo del Prado, to participate and help us with our projects that help this museum. Today, we're again here before the museum opens in this very special room on the upper floors dedicated to the cartoons for tapestries painted by Francisco de Goya. In the progression of Francisco de Goya's career, his kind of first big break was to get a position at the Royal Tapestry Factory of Santa Barbara, where he painted the designs that would be made into tapestries. This gave him access and a presentation to the royal family and to other illustrious clients. And as he grew in his confidence and in, in, in their confidence in him, he was given liberty and freedom to choose the subjects uh, and ideas within these tapestry designs. We're lucky at the Prado to have 11 out of 13 of his third series of tapestries for the Royal Palace. In this case, they're tapestries that are inspired in the four seasons, how the four seasons mark the passing of time, and they are destined for the dining room of the Princes of Asturias. And the Princes of the Asturias are the future king and queen, King Carlos IV, and Maria Luisa de Parma. So this would have been for their dining room in the palace while they were princes. And Goya made a series of 13 tapestries, uh, sorry, of cartoons for the tapestries. And the word cartoon is actually kind of reminiscent of that the first drafts for a tapestry are made on a small board. And a board in Spanish is called carton, and it's translated to cartoon. And although these are paintings, they're oil on canvas, they're normal paintings, the preparatory sketch is on board, and this name kind of transfers over onto the, that's why they're called cartoons, which are designs for tapestries. Now, the tapestries were much more important at this time, um, and these canvases, we're gonna speak more, mostly about the winter. These canvases were used to guide the weavers as they wove the tapestry, it would be folded over. And then when it was finished, the tapestry was finished, the canvas was actually stored away, folded and stored away. And because these are by Goya and his great career, I imagine that they were recuperated and brought back from because of the importance of the artists. And they were brought to the Prado in the 1870s. So we have a little bit of noise because we're preparing for the public um, and we're before the museum opens. But this work, The Winter, was recently restored in 2019. And it's thanks to this restoration that we've learned so much. And there's really great videos in Spanish on the website, on the Prada's website, about this restoration and their restoring process. Since Goya was given freedom of subject, he, um, he's an artist that always brings in a little bit of, of social um, juxtaposition between two social classes. And what we see in the winter is uh, a barren winter scene of, in landscape, a hilly mountainous landscape covered with snow that we can feel the wind thanks to the moving of the trees, there are snowflakes falling, but it's the encounter of two groups of people. One, the, the three men in the center are from uh, kind of a humble class, a labor working class, they're walking, they've moved up to the side of a road, they're walking with their dog and they're wrapped in these blankets. You can feel how cold it is, it's right. They're wrapped in these blankets and they're kind of resignated. No, their faces are unhappy. And their clothes are 
our regional clothes. So we can see one from Castilla and one from Valencia. And they've moved up. It seems like they've moved up on the side of the road where they're walking to let these other two figures pass. And these other two figures have better coats, have better hats. They're, they seem to be, because of this, employees of a, nob of a noble or elite home. And they are escorting with the gun to protect it. They are escorting the winter pantry that is coming on the mule behind them. They're pulling with the rope a mule that carries the pig harvest, the traditional pig slaughter in winter, human activity that's typical throughout many cultures in Europe and throughout the world that gives you your food for the winter. This is, so this was very um, valuable and it needed to be protected by the escort and the escort that was armed. And it's in the, in the three, the three um, figures in the coat, in the, in the, wrapped in the blankets. This is the juxtaposition between the two groups. And it's the expression on their faces that is resignated to potential hunger, definitely unhappy, cold. This juxtaposition between these three and the other two that they've moved out of the way to let them pass with their winter pantry is the window of social criticism no, that Goya can let come through. No, because this is for the dining room of the princes. In the moment of the illustration that there's still absolute monarchy, but that it is an illustrated monarchy that is trying to become closer to the people. And so they're interested in the popular activities like hog killing or summer harvesting or playing games popular games. So this activity is, um, is represented, but Goya allows this juxtaposition between the haves and the have-nots to come through in the tapestry. Now, what we know thanks to the studies and all of the documentation that there is, uh, thanks to art history, about this work is that there, in the preparatory board, the small board, there, was, there are a few, a few changes that make this Mm, work even more kind of desolate. No, a sensation of desolation that there was a house originally thought to be in the background which Goya chose not to put in and he made the wind blowing the tree much stronger so that the tree was bending over more. It gives us a more sensation of cold. And before this was restored it had turned yellow because of oxidation of the varnish and the yellow kind of made it feel warmer. So thanks to the cleaning and the restoration, the, the painting transmits this cold of winter. It comes back, the coldness. And Goya's technique, he, he uses a, a red underlayer, which he knows exactly how he's gonna let shine through. When he paints here just with the dog, in the dog's head, you see the red underlayer coming through above his head, and that gives us a sensation of movement. One of the changes he also made uh, bef between the sketch and the painting is that the dog is in a much more defensive position, uh, adding more desolation no, to, to, the, to the painting. And here's an interesting, um, besides this beautiful harness and halter of the mule carrying the pig, to make the tapestry, and we have a, a little bit of science here from leftover from history, there's added additional black lining, kind of with a pencil, which would be graphite at the time, to help the weavers find the design. They had complained, actually, about how loose Goya's brushstroke uh, was, and he, they, he, he, he defined it more to help the weavers. So that's a testimony of the artistic process of what is happening. And thanks to the cleaning, well, there, there's snowflakes arrived, that it had been covered up and were lost from view. And I'd also like to take a moment to just thank again our supporters to American Friends because we, and I always encourage you to help us, I, this is just an example. In 2018, the restoration workshop asked us to help to get the latest 
technology and infrared, a new camera, and to get it as quickly as possible. And so from American Friends, we donated this camera and the, it's used in the restoration workshop for all to the benefit and the infrared imagery of all of the works that are studied here. So that's just one of the things that we do. And with this, we encourage you to come back to the museum. We're lucky to see a whole series of paintings that were meant for the same, um, for a decorative scheme for a certain place. There's many examples of this. And there's a great website on the Prado also about Goya called Goya en el Prado, and you can see his, his letters to his friends, tons of documentation. So if you're into research, there's a lot available uh, that's freely given to everyone. And we hope to, you, to see you again next week and to find out more about us, American Friends at the Prado Museum and the Fundación Amigos del Museo del Prado.